this video, we'll explore the dangers of vinyl chloride and what to do if you've been exposed to it. On February 3, 2023, East Palestine, Ohio, was near the site of a major derailment of a train that spilled toxic vinyl chloride, which triggered substantial evacuations in the jurisdiction. East Palestine is located along the Norfolk Southern Railway and has a freight train station. The village is about 20 miles south of Youngstown and 40 miles northwest of Pittsburgh. It's located on the state's border with Pennsylvania and has a population of just under 5,000 people. The city was home to industries in ceramics and tire manufacturing from the 1870s until the mid-1960s, but remains a farming town today. Residents were forced to evacuate for fear they could be injured or even killed by exposure to the toxic chemicals in some of the rail cars. Vinyl chloride is a slightly sweet gas that's highly flammable. Most vinyl chloride is used to make polyvinyl chloride, known as PVC, plastic and vinyl products. Acute or short-term exposure to high levels of vinyl chloride in the air has resulted in central nervous system effects in humans, such as dizziness, drowsiness, and headaches. Chronic or long-term exposure to vinyl chloride through inhalation and oral exposure in humans has resulted in liver damage. Chronic exposure can take place when vinyl chloride gets into the water of a town and residents use the water in bathing or uh, laundry and the vinyl chloride because it's such a lightweight material will be released into the home from the water supply and so it really does happen through inhalation there hasn't been a lot of research in humans drinking water contaminated with vinyl chloride but we do know that vinyl chloride collects in the urine of humans and it also collects uh, in various body tissues including the kidneys so if you fear that you've been exposed to it, it may be a good option to take a urine test. The EPA has classified vinyl chloride as a group A human carcinogen, which is a really risky group. Cancer is a major concern from exposure to vinyl chloride via inhalation, as vinyl chloride exposure has been shown to increase the risk of a rare form of liver cancer in humans. PVC is a household material and you can find it in pipes, wire, and cable coatings and packaging materials. Vinyl chloride has been used in the past as a refrigerant, but exposure today is very uncommon. Usually people who are exposed to vinyl chloride are factory workers and they have to wear protect protective equipment, respirators, and work in well-ventilated areas to reduce the risk of vinyl chloride inhalation. Unfortunately, the Americans who were exposed to vinyl chloride in February 2023 did not have those safety precautions in place. Ambient air concentrations of vinyl chloride are generally quite low, with exposure occurring from the discharge of exhaust gases from factories that manufacture or process vinyl chloride or evaporation. Air inside new cars may contain vinyl chloride, and so that slightly sweet smell that you smell, new car smell, is partially due to vinyl chloride. Acute exposure of humans to high levels of vinyl chloride will usually impact the central nervous system. Inhibition of blood clotting in humans and cardiac arrhythmia in animals has resulted from extremely high levels of vinyl chloride, and it also causes loss of consciousness and lung and kidney irritation. Vinyl chloride is reported to be slightly irritating to the eyes and respiratory tract in humans. Liver damage may result in humans from chronic exposure to vinyl chloride. A small percentage of individuals occupationally exposed to high levels of vinyl chloride in air have developed a set of symptoms termed, vi termed vinyl chloride disease, which is characterized by Raynaud's phenomenon, which is when their fingers blanch and are numb and there's discomfort experienced upon exposure to the cold. Changes in the bones at the end of the fingers, joint and muscle pain, and skin changes, such as thickening of the skin, decre decreased elasticity of the skin, and slight edema. The most common impacts are dizziness, drowsiness, fatigue, headache, 
visual and or hearing disturbances, memory loss and sleep disturbances, as well as peripheral nervous system symptoms like tingling, numbness, weakness, and pain in fingers. The EPA has established a reference concentration of 0.1 milligrams per cubic meter. Part of the reason the EPA has established that threshold is because the odor threshold for vinyl chloride is 3,000 parts per meter. And you really have to get to a very high concentration of vinyl chloride in the air before you can smell it. The EPA has also found that the half-life of vinyl chloride in air is just a few hours. So supposedly, vinyl chloride in air will completely dissipate in a day or so. Despite this, vinyl chloride is slightly soluble in water. So it being soluble in water means it can be transported and then when used in the home will be released in the home. It's very difficult to remove from the water. There is currently no chemical systems in place to remove it. It simply has to dissipate on its own, which can take a very long time. The EPA has calculated an oral cancer slope factor of 1.5 milligram per kilogram per day for lifetime exposure to vinyl chloride. If you are exposed to that level of vinyl chloride, the EPA assumes that you will develop oral cancer from it. Um, the EPA has studied vinyl chloride exposure in rats, and several rat studies show a pronounced early life susceptibility to the carcinogenic effect of vinyl chloride. Early exposures are associated with higher liver cancer incidence than similar or much longer exposures that occur after maturity. This means that vinyl chloride exposure in children is incredibly dangerous because it's likely that vinyl chloride accumulates in human body tissue. And so the accumulation over time results in some sort of aberration that will result in, tum in tumors and that will result in cancer. There's also been reports of uh, testes damage and decreased male fertility in rats that were exposed to low levels of vinyl chloride for up to 12 months. So it is possible to be continually exposed to vinyl chloride and to have ongoing health impacts due to the exposure of vinyl chloride. The authorities in Ohio have been releasing and burning vinyl chloride. It is highly flammable, so it is very easy to burn. And again, they are doing this because they want to dissipate as much of it into the air as possible. However, this doesn't address the presence of vinyl chloride in water. The Environmental Protection Agency has said it's monitoring two other chemicals, phosgene and hydrogen chloride, that may be released into the air by the vinyl chloride burn. Neither of these is good news because phosgene was used as a chemical weapon in World War I and is a highly toxic gas that can lead to choking, chest constriction, and in the most acute exposures, possibly even death. Hydrogen chloride is a very smelly gas and it can irritate the throat, nose, and skin. You will know when you've been exposed to it. Train derailments occur roughly a thousand times a year in the United States and this is partly due to the federal government turning a blind eye to the issues with American Rail. The lack of infrastructure, American infrastructure hasn't been funded properly for decades and of course the preference for many bureaucracies and companies to hire people who look good on paper instead of people who actually can do the job. So we've seen a preference for meeting certain minority quotas, for example, instead of hiring people who have the experience and knowledge necessary to keep our infrastructure safe. This is not the only uh, dangerous gas that has been released by rail car failure. In Peoria, Illinois last winter, the highly explosive gas methyl chloride escaped from a loose valve on a rail car, leading the fire department to evacuate a two block radius around the scene and we don't know what happened to the health impacts of that community. It just hasn't been long enough. In August, the Los Angeles Times reported that a chemical leak 
from a tanker car traveling along a railway in Paris, California, caused firefighters to shut down part of the I-215 freeway and evacuate the surrounding area. A senior strategic director at the environmental advocacy group Natural Resources Defense Council said these accidents happen all the time, but often they just don't make the media. The mass media is far more concerned with celebrity culture than things that actually threaten the livelihoods of Americans. If the amount of the toxic chemical release is large enough, it has to be reported to the EPA. It's not known why the EPA drags their feet to investigate these incidences or why the EPA drags their feet to release funding to the communities impacted. The EPA is a federal agency and so has a significantly larger budget than small Midwestern towns. But again, that's up to the, that's up to the executive branch to figure out. Accidents are virtually inevitable, but many people believe we need to be moving towards using less toxic chemicals that are not going to poison people if you have an accident. Not only that, it's incredibly important that American infrastructure be maintained and kept healthy, and so the diversion of taxpayer funds towards things that don't help the infrastructure uh, foreign aid, for example, should be looked at really critically in this time where we're seeing train derailments happen at least once a day in the United States.